everyone, Abby here, and welcome back to my channel for Tech Tuesday, or welcome if you're new. Now today, I'm going to be reviewing the new Garmin VivoActive 5. But before I get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you can stay tuned to all my new videos dropping weekly and so you can help the channel grow. So I have the Vivo Active 5 here in the color Orchid. It did come out in some other great colors as well, which you could see on screen. And the current price for the smartwatch as of recording is $399.99 Canadian and $299.99 American. And in case you guys did miss my last video, I have done a comparison of this smartwatch against the Garmin Venue 3S. So if you're trying to decide which one you want to get out of those two, you'll find that video linked in the description below, which you can check out when you're done watching this. And I'm currently working on my Garmin VivoActive 5 versus Garmin VivoActive 4S video. So make sure you're subscribed with your post notification bells turned on so you don't miss that. It's going to be dropping on Abby B Reviewing Tech Tuesday soon. This smartwatch has a 1.2 inch AMOLED color display, Gorilla Glass 3 lens, a 20 millimeter quick release watch band. It does have touchscreen operation along with two buttons. This smartwatch can track a variety of metrics such as your steps, your calories burned, it has advanced sleep tracking. You can track a variety of activities such as running, walking, swimming, and yoga. It also does have your HRV status. It does have Bluetooth on here so you can connect Bluetooth devices such as external heart rate sensors and speed and cadence sensors for example. You can download hundreds of songs on here and listen to your music phone free using Bluetooth headphones. The smartwatch also has women's health, hydration monitoring, stress tracking, Garmin Pay, body battery, health snapshot, heart rate tracking, built-in GPS, a water rating up to 5 ATM or 50 meters so you can take this in the pool, in the rain, in the shower, all of that stuff. And it has some more features as well, which I've listed on screen for you. Now, these are not all of the specs about the smartwatch because listing them all would take like a bunch of pages, but these are definitely the most important, I think. So when it comes to the design about this smartwatch, you will see we do have plastic buttons. We also have, you know, plastic accents here. We also have a aluminum bezel going around the smartwatch. You can see we do have a 20 millimeter band. And this smartwatch does use Garmin's traditional, um, you know, charging cords. And we do have Garmin's Elevate 4 heart rate sensor, which is the older heart rate sensor as the new Elevate 5 has just come out. And if you guys are finding this video helpful so far, please go ahead and smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. And all right, guys, this is what the smartwatch looks like on me. And I do have a seven inch wrist and I have all the wrist sizes this can fit on screen for you. Now I do find this smartwatch very comfortable to wear. It is nice and lightweight. After wearing it for like an hour or two, I really forget that it's on. I've had no skin irritation issues whatsoever. And I do think that this is a pretty nice looking smartwatch. What do you guys think about the look of the smartwatch here? Do you like it or no? So the smartwatch does have an AMOLED color display. So with that, we could see our bright, bold, punchy colors. It's very reminiscent to something you would see on your smartphone. And with this, the display is actually quite reflective, as you guys can see. This is how the display does look like in the dark, in a darker lighting situation. And here's what it looks like outdoors under some natural lighting in the sun. You really do need to be mindful of pumping your brightness up, otherwise it's gonna be very hard to read because there is a lot of glare. I would definitely recommend putting it on auto brightness or pumping it up if you are using manual brightness when you're outdoors so you can read it. And I have pumped up the brightness here and it's definitely readable in my opinion. And here are some watch faces for you guys to see. These are the pre-installed ones. Uh, there's a variety of options and most of them are customizable in terms of the color and the data available. So when it comes to activity tracking with the smartwatch, I find that it does a very good job. It also does a good job tracking, you know, your metrics like your steps, your calories burned, your intensity minutes. Uh, when it does come to activity tracking, you can track a variety of activities. So I'm just gonna show you guys all of them here for anybody interested. Because a lot of you guys ask me like, what can it track? So I'm just gonna show you everything. So it does track a good amount of activities here, definitely like most of the basics. 
it does have very good GPS performance. Whenever I go out and do a workout, I find the route is spot on. You will not see your route on the smartwatch here. You will see that in the app because this does not have built-in maps. The pace when I'm going out on like a walk or a run, for example, is accurate. And it does connect to the GPS really quickly, usually within 30 seconds or less once I do get outdoors. And I've never had any GPS connection or droppage issues. We do have Garmin's older Elevate 4 heart rate sensor. Now I will say I was a little bit disappointed not to see the newest Elevate 5 on the smartwatch. That being said, the Elevate 4 heart rate sensor, still a really good heart rate sensor. So if the heart rate usually says like 70 beats per second, I'll double check it as a metric, just counting it myself and compare it to the smartwatch and it's literally spot on. Garmin has really good heart rate tracking even in its older heart rate sensors. So the Vivo Active 5 here has a coded battery life up to 11 days as a smartwatch. But that's not what I got. With my usage, things like GPS walks, runs, daily alarms, answering messages, having the always on display off, and more, I have gotten on average seven to eight days of battery life with this smartwatch. So for me, that battery life is great. I only have to charge it once a week or like every other week, really. And I think that most people could fit that into their lifestyle as well. If you are someone who you're gonna turn the always on display on, you are going to reduce your battery life a lot. It kind of really depends on the watch face you're using, but typically with the always on display on, I get around three to four days of battery life. So it cuts basically my battery life in half and that's something that I don't like I prefer having longer battery life above almost anything else and I find that sometimes I don't know if it's a glitch but sometimes it will time out and just go black anyways so you guys can see it just timed out all right guys so now I'm going to get into women's health so for my males out there or anybody else who doesn't want to see this section you can go ahead and use my timestamps in the description below and skip to the next section where I'm going to be talking about sleep tracking so the smartwatch does have women's health so there's actually two apps there's like a pregnancy app and then there's also a menstrual tracking app I'm going to be talking about the women's health menstrual app so you will see the stage you are in your menstrual cycle and then you can go ahead and you can track your daily symptoms, your mood, discharge, um, sex drive, period, day. And I do want to mention that if you do not want to see this or if you want to add stuff, take stuff off, you can do that in the Garmin app. So when it comes to your symptoms, you can see all of these things. And if you're feeling any of them, you can just click on it. And it comes to your mood as well. Also of a variety of options here, which I love to see. And there is more as well that you can go ahead and track. And I do want to mention that you can track this on the smartwatch and you can also track this on your smartphone. This smartwatch also does have period prediction. That is something you will see in the app. And in my experience, it has been spot on accurate. In general, I do find Garmin Women's Health is very easy to use and I find it really helpful. So going into the sleep coach, which is a new feature from Garmin, basically they'll just give you a recommended sleep time and they show your sleep history, show if you took any naps and how all of this information like your workouts impact your sleep. For me, my activities, HRV and naps have no impact on my sleep so far. So this is one of Garmin's brand new smartwatches that actually finally has nap tracking. So if you are someone who you take naps during the day, that could be really beneficial for you. For me, I am not a napper. So looking at my sleep from last night, you can see that the sleep quality says poor, my sleep score 48, the duration seven hours and 28 minutes, and it says non-restorative. So quite honestly, I think so far, all of this stuff very accurate. I did not have a great sleep going now, and we could see a little graph of our sleep, so I could see when I actually fell asleep and when I woke up and it shows a graph of all of the stages. Your light sleep, your REM sleep, your deep sleep, and your time awake. So here we can see a breakdown of all of the sleep stages. I will say this is the area where definitely Garmin needs some work. The sleep stages are always off in my opinion. The time awake, definitely way too low. So that's something to keep in mind. Take this with a grain of salt. It is not the most accurate out there. So when it comes to the smartwatch, I have noticed some cons. The first one for me is the buttons. Now, as I told you guys, the smartwatch has like plastic buttons, plastic accents, and while I don't really like seeing plastic buttons, I don't feel they look great, but these buttons just aren't great functionally. They are very gummy. Um, I hope that description makes sense to you guys, but they just feel like very kind of soft and like squishy. I don't know how to explain it, but sometimes when I press them, they don't like actually push down completely. 
They just like have a weird kind of feedback. And I find sometimes I do have to press them multiple times. I definitely would have preferred if the buttons were better quality. Another con for me is I don't like that Garmin did not give us a 5S. Like, where is that Garmin? Where is their 5S? I want that smaller form factor option. I know a lot of women like myself have small wrists and my wrist is not even that small compared to many other women. You know, my wrist being seven inches, some women have like a five inch wrist or smaller. So I think that this watch may be a bit big for you if you do have a smaller wrist. Another con for me is it does not have a barometric altimeter, does not have a gyroscope, it has an old heart rate sensor as well. And for a smartwatch that's coming out in 2023, like I think that it should have the newer heart rate sensor, which I've said kind of before. If this was an older smartwatch coming out previously before the new one was available, that's a different story, but I don't know why Garmin decided to give us the older heart rate sensor here. I think it's expensive enough that we should have got that. And I don't like not having those sensors available because we're missing out on a lot of data that I personally find important. And the final con for me is that the Vivo Active 5 here is really not a Vivo Active to me. It's it's a venue. It's very much like a Garmin Venue SQ, but circular. What I mean by that is it's a smartwatch that is more affordable from Garmin. It is made with their cheaper materials, kind of has less sensors, less features than the traditional circular venues. And even the color options are almost identical to the Venue SQ. So I really think that this smartwatch is a nice smartwatch, but I don't think it's a Vivo Active. I think they should have branded it as like a Venue 3L, L for light, or something like that. To me, a Vivo Active is a smartwatch that is made with high quality materials. We have a sunlight transflective memory and pixel display, and we have an always on display, and it just doesn't have those things. I'm someone who I really like the memory and pixel sunlight transflective display, because I like to do a lot of outdoor activities, so I wanted to have that option. And we already have the Venue line, which has the AMOLED goodness that people want, so I don't know why they did that here for me this kind of just feels a little bit cheap and for the price point of 399 Canadian and 299 American that's not cheap for a smartwatch so I just wish it was better quality overall and all right guys considering the price the quality the color the battery life the performance the functionality and everything like that, I would go ahead and give this an 8.3 out of 10. And I definitely do give it a thumbs up. So if you guys are looking to pick up the new Garmin Vivo Active 5 here, I've gone ahead and left a link down in the description for you to use. And if there's anything I missed today that you wanna know, just go ahead and drop a comment below. I do read all the comments and I'll definitely get back to you. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Bye.